Tsunami Studios. Dark Knight's Death Metal, The Rise of the New God. I love these tie-ins more than I'm liking the actual book of Death Metal, just because they are so unique and interesting, and we're getting some very creative people writing them. This might be my favorite one, just because it is so insane, so meta, just unbelievable in everything it does. Like, it's literally just reading like a writer talking about themselves in a book and how these characters are immortal for the reason they exist in a book. It is so crazy. I, I love it so much just, just because this is what death metal is. It's just fun nonsense that's so meta, so over the top, so surreal, and it works perfectly. So we open up this book and we're seeing kind of just a little backstory to what we've seen before. We know that the Mobius chair has been taken over by the Batman who laughs. He has become the darkest knight, and he is just literally ready to kill Perpetua. He's going to go take her down. We see people like Rip Hunter standing at the edge of time like, this is bad. We see the like angelic people like Etrigan, some like, I guess, some angel type people just like, this is bad. And then we get to the fight between the blackest knight, or is it the darkest knight? What's he calling himself? The blackest knight or the darkest knight? Well, the Batman who laughs versus Perpetua. There are these giant space gods and they're just beating the shit out of each other in space like i'm not your servant anymore i'm gonna take you down perpetual and she's like you're just insignificant you're just a speck of a dark multiverse you literally don't matter but their battle is so impressive that a being from the omniverse which is the thing in all multiverses so you have the normal earth is part of a multiverse and that multiverse is part of the omniverse and in the omniverse comes the chronicler and his entire job is to make sure things see their natural conclusion in the st in like a form of a story. He's literally just like a writer or a reader just being like, okay, so this is kind of dumb. We got to move this along and get to the end, but the right way. And he's like, how did this ever get here? What is going on with this universe? I've seen so many universes. There is literally nothing like this one. I need to get some answers. So he goes to like the hellscape and he's trying to find this one person who could help him get a couple answers. And he's like, well, it's not the Joker. You're just an annoying guy. I hate you. He's like, oh, there you are. Hello, sir. You are the psycho pirate, right? <laughs> I, I, I didn't think they'd be doing psycho pirate. But I'm so glad James just threw him in here like, yep, that makes sense to me. A being who is beyond the multiverse, stronger than Perpetual, just some guy in the Omniverse. Just was like, yeah, I need to talk to the one guy who has remembered every single crisis that happened and figure out what the hell is going on here. So he goes to talk to Psycho Pirate. He's like, I'm going to need your information, please. Psycho Pirate is just like, what are you talking about? Like, what do you want from me? And he just rips the uh, so, just rips the ideas out of Psycho Pirate's head, puts them in his book, and he starts reading it like, oh, this is weird. And we see like kind of a history of all the different Earths, of all the crises, and you're like, oh my goodness. This is insane. This book is literally insane. This chronicler guy is just crazy. He literally just ripped the thoughts out of the Psycho Pirate. And now he's like, I don't know what to do now. I still need more information. I gotta find somebody else who can help me understand what the hell is going on here. So he goes back to like just a a dusty field where nothing's going on and he just resurrects Metron and he's just talking to Metron this was such a cool moment in the book and just and he's just like you've seen everything that's happened in this earth you have just observed it and watched it what's going on with these people <laughs> like there is just so much weird shit going on in this universe you gotta tell me what's going on here like there is just I've seen countless multiverses. Normally, it's just something as mundane as somebody just being a little aggressive one day. But this world keeps rebooting itself. It keeps restarting itself. People keep coming back at different times, doing some weird shit. It's like it's a comic book or something. He doesn't say that, but it's just so on the nose that it's like DC has been through a lot since the 30s. Like, it has had so many changes, so many crises, so many reboots. I think it's just amazing that they're just calling it out with a character who kind of exists outside of the comic book world and is coming in to observe it like he's reading a book. I think that's so cool. <laughs> this is the kind of stuff I love from Death Metal. It's just so meta, so crazy. And even Metron's just like, yeah, uh, I don't know. This universe creates bad people a lot and we always create good people to combat them. But I don't know, like, I I was dead when these two people started fighting, so I couldn't really tell you what's going on there. I couldn't, like, there's just some weird shit going on here, and I love it so much. Like, this is just the kind of fun that you want from a book like this. 
so interesting, so meta. It's just incredible. So the Chronicler does take all the all the information from Metron, and then he's just like, here, take a look. And he's just like, what the hell am I looking at? This is so much insanity in this world. I can't believe what's happening. But he starts to understand there are real champions and real fighters in here. Ones that will always reboot, always come back because they're characters and they're real people and they're just so fascinating. And the book ends and I'm going to read the last page to you guys just because I'm like, this is so insane. The Chronicler sees the grand story of creation from start to finish in all its cosmic majesty. New emotions swell in his chest. He believes in this universe. He believes in these characters. And in that belief, they become eternal. Just like a comic book writer or a comic book reader, anybody who is a fan of DC Comics picking up this book, picking up any issue of any comic book, reading just reading anything about them, like a news piece, watching a movie, in the belief that you can see these characters physically in any format, they become eternal and they will live forever. And it's just like, we have a literal character in a DC comic who doesn't exist in this multiverse. He exists outside this multiverse in an omniverse. And he's reading the story of the DC Comics universe. And he's like, I believe in these characters. And in his belief, in his belief, these characters will live on forever and always come back. Isn't that meta? Where his belief could literally be the thing that resets the universe. You know, that is just insane. <laughs> Isn't that just insane? What a weird book, man. Like, this is just amazing. I thought it was just going to be like, oh, we're just going to see Perpetua and the Darkest Night fighting. But instead, we're literally looking at this guy from called the Chronicler, who looks a lot like Cosmic Ghost Rider, by the way. I don't know if that was a thing that they tried to do, but he's got the same look. He rips the ideas out of Metron and Psycho Pirate. He fights Brainiac's kid. Was it Dox Viril? I think that's his name just to get this idea of what the universe is. And it's like, this is really crazy, really weird, but it's so freaking awesome. Like, it's just the perfect kind of thing that this story needed. Like, I like the story of death metal. I think it's fun, it's cute, it's doing some interesting stuff, but this is on a whole other level. This is taking the idea that it's all connected, everything matters, and just being like, yeah, the fact that literally someone outside of the multiverse, like you, the reader, could believe in these characters enough and pick up the books and buy the books enough to make everything real and something you can hold in your hands and eternal is enough to keep it going that is insane to me that is some freaking amazing fun stuff i really do like that what a cool way to spin this book i enjoyed this this is my favorite tie-in i think and i've loved every tie-in the multi versus end tie-in was great the robin king tie-in was great the speed metal one was great they've all been great but this one it was just so perfect, so fun, so encapsulating. Jesus Manero, Manino or something is the artist. Looks fantastic. Great stuff. Tynan's writing. It's great stuff. Everything about it works really well. So, Death Metal, Rise of the New God. I am going to give a 9 out of 10. Now, thank you guys so much for watching this review. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. As always, you can check me out on Instagram, Patreon, Twitter, all that good stuff, and I'll catch you in the next one. Have fun, stay safe, good luck.